Hey guys, Mr. T here. This is a video to help you with your um, Year 10 Physics uh, test revision. So this one, um, this set of questions is on um, distance displacement, speed and velocity. So you just need to keep in mind um, speed is equal to the distance over time and velocity is equal to the displacement over time. But if you prefer the little triangles to help you out, well, you can use this instead. So S equal to D on T and um, V is equal to V is equal to D on T. So if you're using the triangles, you cover up the variable that you're interested in, then you complete the operation that is remaining in the triangle. So in class, um, uh, many times we've gone over the idea of um, vectors and scalars. So a scalar is something where we're only interested in the size of the, the measurement, whereas a vector we're interested in the size and the direction of it. And we've spoken about speed being a scalar and velocity being a vector. So speed is a scalar and velocity is a vector. A is the correct answer for that. A vector quantity differs from a scalar and that a vector always includes. Magnitude is important and the direction is important. So it must be C. A cyclist travels 125 kilometers in five hours. How fast is a cycle moving? Um, so fast speed, um, it's not um, stated whether this is displacement or direction. So we're just gonna um, roll with the speed. So we're using the speed is equal to distance over time or the triangle. It's asking for the speed, so I'd cover up S. So it's gonna be D over T. So speed is equal to distance over time, the distance is 125 kilometers. It took five hours. So 125 divided by five is going to be 25 kilometers per hour. How do I know those units are kilometers an hour? Because the distance was in kilometers and the time was in hours. So continuing on, number four, the plane travels at 600 kilometers an hour. How far will it travel? So, it's asking for the distance this time. So, using the triangle, I'm after the distance. So, cover that up. The distance is going to be the speed times by the time. The speed was 600 kilometers an hour times by three hours. And we can't just put 0.15. 15 minutes is a fraction of an hour, and we need to work that out. So to work that out, 15 divided by 60, that comes to 0 0.25. So 15 minutes is actually 0.25, or a quarter of an hour. So 600, divide, um, 600 times by 3.25 um, gives you 1950 kilometers. Alright, so that's that. I've got to circle this here. 25 kilometers an hour. Question 5. A snail is crawling at a um, speed of 0.1 centimeters per second for 45 seconds. How far does it travel? So again, we're looking for distance. So, drawing the triangle again. We're looking for the distance, so colour it in. So distance is equal to the speed times by the time. The speed is 0 0.1 centimetres per second times by the time of 45 seconds. That's going to be 4.5 centimetres. So it's option C. The journey from Winnipeg to Austin is 200 kilometres. If the train travels at 100 kilometres an hour, how long? So this time it's looking for time. So here's your triangle, distance is equal to speed. And a time at the bottom, I'm interested in how long, so I cover up the T. So time is going to be the distance over the speed. The distance is 200 kilometers divided by the speed, which is 100 kilometers per hour. 200 divided by 100 is two, and you've got hours left over. 
So it's going to be two hours the journey. A sprinter runs 200 meters at 8.6 meters per second. How long? So, drawing the triangle again. How long? So, I'm interested in the time. So, time is equal to the distance divided by the speed. The distance was 200 meters. The speed was 8.6 meters per second. 200 divided by 8.6 it comes to about 23.3 seconds is left over out of the units so it must be option A scrolling up upward straight sloping line left to right on a distance time graph means so you can see here that at one second it's gone a distance of 50 meters at 2 seconds it's got a distance of 100, at 3 it's about 150, so it's going the same distance every second, so it's going the same speed over time, so it's constant speed. A flat non-sloping line and distance time graph means the distance here, let's say it was 5, e.g. 5, it hasn't changed, so that means it's not going anywhere, so it's got no speed. Um, moving on, number 10, on a distance time graph, if line A has a steeper slope than line B, then object A has a what? Well, you can always pretend to put units there, let's say that was 0, that was 5, that was 10, and let's say where A was was 1, 2, let's say B was at 3, A would be going faster, because it's got a steeper slope, so... With our example numbers, A is gone for one second, but it's gone a distance of 10, so it would be like 10 meters per second. Whereas here, let's say B was like a 3 or 4, it's gone 3 um, distance in 3 seconds, so that's like 1 meter per second, so that's much lower speed. So don't be afraid to put pretend numbers there, because you can still answer the question. That indicates to us that the steeper line has a greater speed, because it's gone further in less time. A curved line which gets steeper on a distance time graph represents acceleration. It's curving up, it's going further in the same units of time, later on in the time. And lastly, a flat non-slope line on a velocity. So this is velocity, which is how fast it's going, and that's not changing. But that line isn't at zero, it's above. So it's going at a speed, but that speed is staying the same. So it's going at constant speed. So unlike before where the graph was distance over time and it was staying, so it wasn't moving here, this is velocity over time. That indicates it's moving, but it's staying at the same speed constantly. All right. Um, last couple of questions, I believe. Okay. So unfortunately these ones didn't come out right from the web page that I took them from. But basically they were asking you to work out what was the speed between 0 and 1 second, what was the speed between 1 and 3 seconds, what was the speed between 3 and 4 seconds. So you look at the graph and the speed is the slope of the line. So the slope is the y step or the x step, so speed is equal to, between 0 and 1, it went up by 2, and it went across by 1, so the speed was 2 meters per second. Um, 1, 2, 3 seconds, the speed, it didn't change, so it didn't go up, so there was no y step, so it was 0 divided by, and there was 2 seconds between, so it had no speed. And between 3 and 4 seconds, it went up by 1, and it took 1 second, so 1 divided by 1, 1 meter per second. Okay, so that was an example of a reading the graph question. These little arrow boxes just didn't work on the PDF that I sent, but that's how you would have answered that. And lastly, this was asking you to look at the graph and tell me where there was 
zero velocity, greatest velocity, and least non-zero. So zero velocity. When did that happen? That's when the graph was flat, so between one and three seconds. When was it greatest velocity? So we've already seen in a question before that you have greater speed when it's more sloped and the biggest slope or the most steep slope here was between 0 and 1 seconds and uh, least non-zero velocity was the last little slope but wasn't as steep, it was between 3 and 4 seconds. So that finishes that sheet. Hopefully these solutions help you out um, as I spoke through them and told you how to think through the solutions. And I'll see you in the next video.